Christian fiction books and Christian movies and television are not equal. They are not made equal. You cannot compare them. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Mandy, the Handmade Homeschooler. And today I'm gonna to give you my favorite books of the entire year. I read so many books. I read more books this year than probably the last like four or five years combined. <laughs> and there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, I had a lot of health issues that made concentration and, and reading really difficult. I had a phone addiction that was taking away any time that I would have had to read anything leisurely. And, you know, I just kind of fell out of practice a little bit, I guess you could say, between everything going on, being just chaotic home stuff. And in 2023, I finally decided to just say, I'm gonna fix this. <laughs> so back in July or August, I finally figured out how to get more book time in and I read some incredible books. Now, if you want to follow along with my reading journey, um, I post a lot over on my Instagram. I post almost daily on my Instagram and my stories and things like that so you can see what I'm reading. And I also have a Goodreads account, which I will remember to link down below in the description box. And you can follow along with me in real time so you can see even like what page I'm on of what book before I even post it on here on YouTube. So at the end of the month, I do a roundup of all the books that I read throughout each month. And I do that on my blog and I do that here on YouTube. And I usually have like one book that was my favorite. So today I'm gonna to show you all the books in 2023 that were my absolute favorites that I still can't stop thinking about. And I have a little bit of a lot of different genres here. I have some classics, I have kid lit, I have some spooky books. I, ha I have so many different things here. I was like all over the place with the genres, but that's the fun part of it, right? All right, so grab your coffee and we're gonna chat favorite books for 2023. Okay, so one of the things that I got for Christmas this year was a Kindle. My husband bought me a brand new Kindle. Um, I've only had it for a week. It's Christmas was just like, I don't know, less than a week ago. And this was my big Christmas present. I love this new Kindle. My old Kindle was 10 plus years old. This one is great. I have a Kindle Unlimited account, which makes it a lot easier to um, read a ton more books and I don't have to pay for it. So I save a ton of money with a Kindle Unlimited. Some of the books will be here um, on my Kindle, so I don't actually have the physical book to show you, but I do have some physical books. So the first two books, are actually Kindle Unlimited books. <laughs> so the first two books are by Gabriel Meyer, and I am on the ARC launching team for the next book in the series. I am so excited. I'm like silly excited about this. But you can actually say that her book series got me back into reading. These were the two that I launched into my reading journey with, and it was over from there. So Gabriel Meyer, I owe a lot to her. <laughs> So the first one is In This Moment. This is the first book in the series. This is a split time book, which I was new, like split time books seem to be really popular right now, but I was pretty new to that type of reading. I really adored this series. I wasn't sure if having the split time type of thing was going to throw me off and I found it was a lot easier to go along with it than I thought. This is about a girl who can, up into a certain point in her life, up until a certain birthday where she has to choose, she can have multiple lives at the same time with different time periods. So she's living in like 1776 in one and I think 1924, I might be wrong with that one, in another life and by her birthday she has to choose which life she wants it gets really complicated but it is such a cool story i really enjoyed it i was really surprised at how much i enjoyed this book and the second novel in the series is the next book on this list so the second book is this one called when the day comes again by gabriel meyer 
And this one was also a really neat one. There were three timelines in this one. There was 2001, there was one in the 1800s, and one in the 1940s, Pearl Harbor. So we get kind of like a history lesson while we're inside of these books because there's always some major event happening. There's a war going on, September 11th was another one. There's really a lot of cool elements in this and you see how the characters have to navigate through each timeline and figure out where they really want to stay. And that's a really complicated thing to think about. You know, I found myself going, I don't know if I would make the same decision. Would I want to stay here or would I want to stay in this timeline? I don't know. You know, there's benefits and, and drawbacks to each different timeline and you see the thought process that these characters have to go through to pick the one that they think that they're gonna be the most happy and the most fulfilled in. So those were my first two books. The other ones, I actually have the physical book that I'm gonna show you. All right, you guys have seen me talk about this book so much, especially if you followed me on Instagram, Rebecca. It's a classic. It was on the Compass Classroom Classics book list for high school. I love this book. And so many of you told me in the review video for this book that there are other books by this author that kind of deal with the same thing. I'm not sure if it, I don't think it's a series book, but maybe it's like a continuation of other characters or like prequels of other characters. I'm looking into those because this one, I, I loved it. I just absolutely loved Rebecca. I was so taken aback by how much I love this book because I'm normally not huge into classics. Now I love Anna Green Gables. You guys know like Anna Green Gables is one of my very favorite books in the world. That whole series is. I'm such an Anne fan. <laughs> um, even my profile picture right now is me reading Anna Green Gables. <laughs> that's how much I love it. But that's kind of like the exception and not the rule for me. I usually like books like the ones that I've already showed you that are really historical but yet have like a, a modern flair to it or have like a touch of something different or suspense, something like that. So, like I usually like a little bit of something extra. So I was really surprised by how much I loved Rebecca. Rebecca really took me off guard. So Rebecca is a really surprising novel because you don't even really find out the main character's name until like halfway through the story and it was just so different. This was written in the 1930s and it, although this is not a Christian book, there is, it, it's pretty clean. I would say higher teen level. I wouldn't let my 13 year old read it, but I might let my 17 year old read it. You know what I mean? Um, definitely more in the YA category there. There are talks of things like affairs and murder and it, it really is like a murder mystery and it is, it really has such like a creepy feel to it. But at the same time, there's not really anything supernatural going on. It's just this murder or a death of a character and they can't figure out what happened to this person, what happened to Rebecca. And I remember just jumping up and screaming, I knew it <laughs> when everything fell together in this on this one page and my husband just laughed at me the entire time. It was so funny. But it was one of the first books that I was into so much that my husband was like, What are you reading? You have to tell me about what you're reading. He's not like he's not a book guy. So this one, even my husband was very intrigued by it. Highly, highly recommend Rebecca. That's one I think that I will reread. I'm not a huge like rereader type of person, but I'll reread that one. So I'm actually keeping that on my shelf. Okay, let's look at the one kid lit that I have in my stack, Forbidden Child. So Gwen Newell, I listened to her on Stories or Soul Food podcast talking about this book and her telling the story of this book and how she came up with it is actually what led me to read it. This is a, um, it's like a true YA book. I say true YA because there are books that are considered YA and there are true YA books. True YA books are for 12 to 18 year olds and that's what it's always been. YA, and which stands for young adult, it has always supposed to have been for 12 to 18, but over time, especially in the like 2010 era, they started to morph into like 
more adultish type content and it's just it's led down a road where 12 year olds are reading explicit content this is a true ya book meant for teens <laughs> The main character, I believe, is 12 or 13 years old. Her name is Piper. She is on a cruise ship, and it's like the Hunger Games meets The Giver, and maybe even a little bit of Divergent in there, just like a little bit of flair. But this is a really, really cool book, and it's set on a cruise ship, which I thought was the most outlandish idea, but it totally works in this scenario. I was, the plot is really cool. Um, and even though the main, ca main character is a girl, my very boy boy 13 year old thought this was a cool book. The ending shocked both of us and we were both like, cause we both finished it within like the same day and we were both like, what just happened? <laughs> like, is there another book coming? But I don't think it is, it's a standalone. So Gwen did an amazing job. This is her debut novel, dystopia book really cool i was it's a total suspense book really really neat you can get that on canon or amazon i'll leave all the links for everything down below in the description okay speaking of creepy i got into jamie joe wright this year <laughs> jamie joe wright writes the best suspense creepy novels that are not like super scary but that will keep you up at night just a little bit <laughs> Um, everything always turns out to be, you know, like not a ghost or something like that. Everything always ends up being something rational, logical, that type of thing. It is Christian fiction and there's always a logical explanation for everything going on, which I love that she does. Um, there's so much gore out in books these days that we don't need more of it, but this one was so neat the souls of lost lake my favorite book of october i read this in um in the fall this was such a cool fall book and it's about a girl named ava and everybody thinks that she murdered her family but she was only 13 at the time and it was you could tell that they just couldn't find the murderer and so they pinned it on this girl because she was the only survivor. So it had to have been her and there could have been no other explanation because the police just could not figure out who did this heinous, heinous thing. Really, really neat book. Another split time book. So we're reading Ava's story and then we're reading Arwen's story from uh, this time period. And they're trying to solve the mystery from Ava's time period. Really neat book. Um, kept me up. There were times that like my husband would come up behind me and just like scare me because he knew I was reading this book and I would jump like a foot in the air. He's so mean. <laughs> but this one was just really, really cool. I was, I was really taken by this book. I don't know if I'll read it again, but I don't want to get rid of it at the same time. The last book on my list is The Warsaw Sisters. Another Christian fiction book, but based on real events based on the um based on world war ii and the invasion of poland and wow this book gripped me like i'm still i'm still coming down from this book i really am i feel like there was just so much in this book it's about two twin sisters who are living um in poland at the time and basically everything that just unfolds around them and their incredible journey from going from immature teenage girls to young women who are ready to fight for their freedom and for their country in the only ways that they can and this one will grip you if you like world war ii historical novels grab this one although the women in here are not real this is not a real story of these two women everything else that unfolds around them are true events and I learned so much history by reading this. It's almost like what they would call like a living book um, in Charlotte Mason world. So, so good. So very good. And you will learn so much. There's so many like small details in here that you wouldn't even known about that you didn't know that actually happened unless you read from someone who has done so much research on this topic, like Amanda Bar Barrett, I hope I said her name right, um, that the author has written in here. She did extensive research 
on this time period. I mean, huge, huge accolades to her. I hope that this book wins all the Christie Awards. This one was just amazing. And now I'm gonna go read her other one that actually did um, get a Christie Award, I believe, Within These Walls of Sorrow. I bought this one and I bought that one at the same time. It's on my list of books to read. Okay, those are my favorite books of 2023. I will have more next year for 2024 and just because I'm gonna be reading more. So I'll probably have double the stack of, um, of books for next year than I have this year, but these were amazing books. And these are books that I won't be selling most likely. I will be keeping probably all of these books. I'm just, I'm so impressed by, by these authors. And anybody who thinks that Christian fiction isn't good hasn't read like recent Christian fiction. These are excellent books. Christian fiction books and Christian movies and TV are not equal. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. There's very, I feel like when it comes to Christian entertainment, Christian TV and movies can be really weird <laughs> and awkward and kind of just cringy. Christian fiction books and Christian movies and television are not equal. They are not made equal. You cannot compare them. It's just so different. So I highly recommend picking up these books. They're relatively clean. There's all different kinds of genres in here and this will give you and your kids some really good reading material over the next year. Pick up one of these, maybe like one a month or something and throw it into your reading routine. Even if you can only read like 10 minutes a day, that's usually about how long it takes to read a chapter, 10 to 15 minutes. And if you can do that, you can read a book within a month. So take my advice. These are good books. I will leave the links down below for everything in the, in the description box for you. And you can go book shopping. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and as always, happy homeschooling.